In our other videos, we talked about the basics of fine-tuning a language model with TensorFlow. And as always, when I refer to videos, I'll link them below. But still, can we do better? So here's the code from our model fine-tuning video. And while, while it works, we could definitely tweak a couple of things. By far the most important thing is the learning rate. In this video, we'll talk about how to change it, which will make your training much more consistently successful. In fact, there are two things we want to change about the default learning rate for Adam. The first is that it's way too high for our models. So by default, Adam uses a learning rate of 10 to the minus three, which is very high for training transformers. We're gonna start at five by 10 to the minus five, which is 20 times lower than the default. And secondly, we don't just want a constant learning rate. We can get even better performance if we decay the learning rate down to a tiny value or even to zero over the course of training. So that's what this polynomial decay schedule thing is doing. That name might be intimidating, especially if you only vaguely remember what a polynomial is from maths class. So I'll show you what that decay looks like in a second. But first we need to tell the scheduler how long training is going to be so that it decays at the right speed. And that's what this code here is doing. So we're computing how many mini batches the model is going to see over the entire training run. And to compute that, we're taking the size of the training set, dividing it by the batch size, which gives us the number of batches per epoch. And then we're multiplying that by the number of epochs to get the total number of batches it's going to see over the whole training run. So once we know how many batches, how many training steps we're taking, we just pass all of that information to the scheduler and we're ready to go. So what does the polynomial decay schedule look like? With default options, it's actually just a linear schedule. So it looks like this. It starts at our initial value, which is five by 10 to the minus five or five E minus five. And then it decays down at a constant rate until it hits zero right at the very end of training. So why do they call it polynomial and not linear? Well, if you tweak the options, you can get a higher order, a truly polynomial decay schedule, but there's no need to do that right now. By default, you get a linear schedule, and if you were aware that a linear function is a special case of a polynomial, you can feel proud. So that aside, how do we actually use this scheduler? So easily, we just pass it to Adam. You'll notice the first time when we compiled the model, we just passed the string Adam. Keras recognizes the names of common optimizers and loss functions if you pass them as strings. So it saves time and it avoids imports to do it that way if you only want the default settings. But we're professional machine learners now with our very own learning rate schedule. So we have to do things properly. So the first thing we do is we import the optimizer, then we initialize it with our scheduler and the learning rate argument, and then we compile the model using our new optimizer and whatever loss function you want. We'll leave that unchanged. This will be sparse categorical cross entropy if you're following along from the fine tuning video, but it can be anything else that you're using yourself. So now we have a high performance model ready to go. All that remains is to fit the model just like we did before. And remember, because we've compiled the model with the new optimizer and the new learning rate, we actually don't need to change anything about the fit call at all. We just call fit here exactly the same command we used before, or if you've, if you've seen in other videos. But now we get a beautiful training with a nice, smooth, a good initial learning rate and a solid learning rate decay. And you will get much better performance as a result.